Hello, and welcome to this week's episode, everyone. My name is Zane. Don't ask why, just put an eye. And with me this week is Amina. It's just me. <laughs> it's just Amina. It's just me today. <laughs> me and Amina, the, the duo, once again. The dynamic duo. The dynamic duo. Uh, Sum, summer, is a little, uh, summer is away because she's a little busy. She's a little caught up with a lot of things. So She, uh... She had a rough couple of days work-wise, and I don't think, you know, it's hard when you have a little baby tea kettle, and you also have a job, and you have to do both. Yeah. So she, uh, you know, we don't have tea kettles. We don't have tea kettles. Uh, we, and, don't, uh, we don't have things, we don't have, we don't have much in our lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess so. I guess that's true. <laughs> we have our jobs. We got jobs. Um, we got jobs. We have for a, we, At least we got yeah. jobs. I guess that's the yeah. That's the most important. No thing, one right? can come here and be like these millennials with no, their we're working in their parents' basements, not with no honestly, jobs. Honestly, the past couple of weeks when it comes to jobs have been pretty hellish for me. I oh, should say man. that. And no, no, no. Well, not not work itself wasn't the hellish part. It was everything around work that was the hellish part. And let me explain. Let me explain. Yes, so, yes. and we, I just got home. As Amna knows, um, I just got home at seven forty. Right. I usually get home at around seven. And that's a good day when the MTA, the subway system in New York City, actually works and actually, you know, does stuff, you know. Good. It should, ideally. Um, but, oh, my God, Amna, for the past – and this is the reason why we haven't been able to even record because this this is definitely one of the reasons why we haven't been able to record is because I've been getting home – so late, especially last week. Every single day last week, I got back home around seven forty-five, eight p.m. It's hard because man. It, it it's it's so bad, and I'm trying to refrain from swearing. I'm trying to refrain because no, you it's, swear, you swear. Because I am so angry at the MTA, so goddamn angry at the MTA. It's just one of those things where it's like, I get it. The public transportation as a whole is a public thing. You know, it. There's going to be a lot of issues with that, especially with a subway system that's a hundred years old. With the you know degrading infrastructure sucks, and I've I've bitched and complained about this in the past episodes. So we, I don't want to repeat that. But I just want to say that it's like it's one of those things where when you are paying, when I am paying one hundred and twenty one dollars for a monthly unlimited, and I'm not getting the service to get home in time. One forty. No, no, it's one twenty one um, for monthly. Which is not bad. Uh, which is it, no, no, no. Which is bad. Okay. Which is bad, bad. But like, if you but if you think about the in the long run, like if I'm if I'm paying individual tickets, I'm actually saving more money by doing the. No, no I agree, but it's still super expensive. You know what I'm trying oh, to yeah, say? Oh like, yeah, sure. What bothers me, and I was just having this conversation today, honestly, is that with Transpo and rent in NYC, it. How does how does anyone live there that's not making a crap ton of money? Is my question. You know, it's yeah, it's yeah. It's, un, it's it's unless you're living in like a crap hole crack den, you know. <laughs> Which I thank God I don't. <laughs> I used well, to, but not anymore. Live in, like imagine living in Manhattan. Right? You don't even live in Manhattan. Uh, I live in Queens. Exactly. So it's a little different. But living in Manhattan, you can't unless you're literally no. living in a crack den. If I if for the amount I'm paying for my apartment right now, I would be in a closet in Manhattan, literally a closet. Which is it's honestly it's it's un it's it's unbelievable. It's it's just one of those yeah like it's just the thing is just like I'm paying 121 for the service and for the last two weeks now, it's just been the worst service I've seen in my life. It just nothing makes sense why I'm getting home this late. Doesn't make sense. The fact that I had to rely on Uber on top of what I'm paying for the subway system, right? The fact that I paid 121 and then I didn't, don't even, not even, not even able to get home. I'm stranded in one of the stations. I had to get off the station and just wait for an Uber and pay an extra eight bucks on top of the 275. It's just like, why? What am I doing? Why? Why am I doing this? Why am I paying for something that's not working? <laughs> You know, yeah. but you can't do anything. You can't do anything. You're in the mercy of MTA. There's yeah. only one train system. No one's gonna. You, you can't boycott it. You know what I'm gonna say? You can't. Like, you can't. So they know it's that it's just one company. It's just one. Yeah. Right. So that's it's one of the. And so and me walking into my house right now at 7:40, I was coming with my roommate as well, 
and we were both talking about this because we were both on the same train. We we happened to be on the same train dealing with the same crap. Mm. And we were walking around and you were like, yeah, like, like, why? Like, why? It's just one of those things. It's like, and then, and we, we can talk about this in another episode, but then Amazon is also coming to New York City and that's also going to be impacting the oh, seven train. God. Adding another 25,000 people to the train that I take. It's like, oh. I can only imagine what's going to be like in, in a year or so or two years. And, you know, you know, it's yeah. just, it's bad. It's bad. It's but bad. Enough of, my, enough of my soapbox on that. Well, on a lighter note, uh, Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas got married this weekend. I hear. I, 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 so I know that there was a video that they were, that was going around. I didn't see the video, but they were playing the newlywed game. I didn't see that. That was through Vogue. So what I had to say, which I'm not, anti or you know pro but they they publicize their wedding a lot like they weren't they they didn't shy off from it being in the public eye you know what i'm trying to say i didn't feel i I mean yeah they they were very public with it but i didn't feel like they were too public with it i mean that's what me that's just me it actually felt like they were genuinely happy and this is coming from me and i'm not very like ooh romance you know but Mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely think they seem genuinely happy, but I thought it was like, I've been seeing a lot of like commentary being like, how do you feel about mixed weddings and this, this, that, and, and, you know, mixed weddings, meaning like mixed, uh, mixed customs, you know, because they had a Hindu wedding, but they also had a, I think he's Catholic. Ooh, the, the Jonas fans will get me if I'm wrong, but a Christian ceremony as well. And, you know, uh, people were like, oh, that's interesting. I'm like, why is that interesting to people? Like, she has a culture that she's super attached to. She's not American. She is Indian. Like, we're, you know, Hindu Indian, okay? And, you know, he's he was raised here. And so he his family is religious. I mean, his dad's a pastor. And so they mixed the traditions. I thought it was really nice. Yeah, I mean, is that isn't that what you know America is all about? Just mixed cultures. We're all mixed. Not in a way. lately, okay. Yeah, well, that's true, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not a, very, a nice. We're the melting pot. <laughs> a fruit salad. A yeah, fruit we're salad. a fruit salad. You know, but no, no, I was seeing a lot of stuff about that, and then there was also controversy because I guess they had a bunch of fireworks at the wedding, and then like she, I guess, put out a PSA during Diwali. In India, that was like, can we avoid the firecrackers, this Diwali, especially because of air quality and, you know, as an asthmatic and this, 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 that. And so people were like, that's hypocritical. And I have to say it is. It's definitely. <laughs> Wait, how so? Wait, was she saying not to do it? She did PSAs she is? in okay. India that during Diwali not to light firecrackers. Oh, she's at, oh, she's saying t- for Diwali people like uh, as the because holiday I guess as a whole. During Diwali, okay. I mean during Diwali there's a lot of people lighting firecrackers, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's the it's literally the festival of lights. So I mean, you know, right? And so yeah. she was like, you know, of try and avoid it if you can because it really f's up with the air, the air quality, and I guess I mean India's, you know, and especially in like the big cities, air quality is a problem. I mean, we come from Karachi, we see that green smog, we know that shit. <laughs> when 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 the plane shakes as you're landing, you know it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear like it crunching into the the you engine, hear the dirt going into the <laughs> engine, yeah. And then the at night, the sky's green because of smog. <laughs> You you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that green tint, but yeah. um, but you don't see that in like northern Pakistan, like in like the mountains because it's no, so, it's beautiful up there. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, but in in so in Mumbai, right? There's there's bad air quality, and so she was like a, as an asthmatic because she has asthma. She's like it's really tough for people, you know. And I have the ability to you know have my inhaler, but a lot of people don't, and this is that. So you know, be careful. And then for her wedding. Though it was in a Rajasthan palace, like, off in, like, the distance, they had a shit ton of fireworks. Ah, uh, so that's really And so people were like, Democracy what comes. a hypocrite. You know, this is, they, they, we hate on each other a lot. We're not very pro. You know what I've noticed? Yeah. I'm just going on a little side tangent. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here. The black community is very supportive of their endeavors. Yeah. The, you know, the Hispanic community is very supportive of the Hispanic endeavors. 
Disies are not supportive of Desi endeavors. Unless they're huge Bollywood stars, right? Unless you're Shadow Khan, Salman Khan, all the Khans, you know, big Bollywood stars, you know, like if you're if you deviate from the norm, you're like shunned. Mm-hmm. Do you think I'm wrong? No, that's totally true. What was that thing that just happened recently that um Maybe it might have been this, but there was some something that just happened recently where they're like, "Oh, you're not you're not a Daisy anymore." There was, oh god, what was the thing? Was it Priyanka Chopra? I f- it was I, I it must have been Priyanka Chopra because I remember reading somewhere where there were just like people on on Facebook were just being like, "Oh no no no, not Priyanka Chopra." It was um Zayn, uh, you know, Zane the Malik? Uh, Zayn Malik. Yeah yeah yeah. When he when he just recently was like, "Oh, I'm not religious. Like I'm not religious. I'm not really a Muslim." And like all, and I just specifically read the comments on Facebook from that post, and oh my god! So every Daisy person, every like, I'm not gonna okay, should generalize. Every white person, black person, Hispanic person on that post was like, oh, that's awesome! Like, you know, like at least you were holding true to what you believe in, you know. And then every Daisy comment was like, well, we are you are not part of our culture anymore. We don't believe in you anymore. We used to love you, but now we hate you. And you're just like, what? it goes down the line yeah in some ways it's tough because i see the perspective in the sense that like a lot of american american born desi celebrities reject the the religious or the culture more cultural side of things Mm -hmm. the only and and they're not the ones that are born abroad though you see kumail nanjiani yes his you know like I, i i mean he he's Muslim. He he admits that he's Muslim, Pakistan. I mean, he of course he's Pakistan. He was born and raised there, but he doesn't shy away from the fact that he's Muslim. Yeah. But all the American born ones kind of shy away from that more. Like oh, yeah. their faith. And I'm kind of like, you know, you can be Muslim and also be proud of it. And also be like, I'm Muslim. I I'm definitely more moderate, but I, I have my faith, you know? I feel like they shy away from it because I feel like a lot of it is, you know, the public eye, you know? Yeah. And and Uh-oh. they don't want to associate. If it was really like they truly weren't religious and they didn't adhere to it, it'd be like, chill. But if they are like us, I mean, we're not super religious here, but at all, really. But we, we have our faith. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. And I would not Uh-oh. be like, I'm not really Muslim. Like if someone asked me, like, yeah, I'm Muslim. Yeah. You know? Um. Wait, it, it's funny because I, I have a funny story about that. Like, you know, like you were just saying that, like, you know, the modern, like the American born Muslims, you know, they shy away from it. Right. I just I just faced I just had an example of um, meeting someone just for the first time over the weekend. Okay. And uh, he was pretty funny with the way how much he embraced, um, you know, being a Muslim and everything. And you would have never expected it because this guy. He walks in and he he is him and his cousin. He walks in and they're both kind of, I'm gonna stereotype here. They're both very ghetto looking, right? They're they yeah. had the chain they had the chains on, they were talking like this, man. What's going on, brother man? You know, like really, like they're really laying it hard, right? You can tell that these guys were they were, they were born the in the ghetto. Gangsters. They're Daisy gangster, but they weren't Daisy though. They're, they they were black. They were black people. Oh, okay, okay. So but, they but, were just but, OG gangsters. They were just OGs. They were just OGs. But but they were very very religious. But you when you hear them talk, and when I was listening to these guys talk, you were would they, never were they them. Nation of Islam or were they Muslim mainstream Muslim? Uh, that's different. What in what do you mean? In what sense? Well, Nation like, of Islam, like Islam. So Nation of Islam is kind of different than Islam. Like they they believe in other prophets other than like, no no no, no. they they were they were they were definitely just like they were normal like they were Sunni Muslims like, they oh, were okay, just, okay, okay. yeah 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 but it was just like you would you would see these guys and you would never expect them you they were just they they just like they were talking about you know uh, they were talking about random stuff I don't even want to go into it because they probably would get in trouble <laughs> they were just getting into really weird crap that they were talking about but at one point he <laughs> my friend who was with me he goes hey um you should go to juma namas one day or i don't know how the, the topic no, was brought friday up. Fr- fr- juma namas no, fr- is, is you, you want to say friday namas. No, yeah friday prayer friday namas. it's yeah. prayer on friday okay yeah yeah um and he was like i, I don't know how the, it got brought up but he was like yeah you should go to juma namas one day and the guy's like <laughs> he goes yeah, man, I love Allah. I'll go to do a Friday prayer. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, it's just like that for me, that was the funniest thing in the world because you hear the clash of like modern America and just like him trying to be well, like, yeah, man, I love, I love Allah. I no, 
<laughs> no one would question twice. Someone's like, yeah, I love God. Or like, yeah, Jesus, my homeboy. But yeah. when you see her, someone go, yeah, I love Allah. Then you're like, oh. <laughs> you're like, you, what? You peep that. You're like, what is happening right there? And but I that's died laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's my point. It's like no, no like celebrity is doing that. Because they no. would have the backlash of middle America would be and the racists of the new of the New England areas would be, you know, not not great. So not for it. Yeah. So I, I see the backlash where this is like, oh, okay. But I'm also like, we turn our backs real damn quick. Oh yeah. Real and you know what I've noticed is like the men. Oh God! Mm-hmm. All the men are gonna hate me, but the men are so so strongly opinionated about women. I've seen a lot of men hate oh, yeah. on Priyanka Chopra. Uh, oh yeah, and I feel like there's an in like um an inferiority that she married a white guy. Yeah, that she's living that you know that luxury white you know it's that because how 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 should I say it without offending people like it's the because I guess if like to in the eyes of some rando in India they think America as being the land of like, oh man, you're the land of riches and the land of like, you can do whatever you want. You can, you know. So then when they see someone getting married into a white family, they're like, they think oh. of them a sellout. Sellout, You, you yeah. jokingly called her a sellout. <laughs> for for months and months I kept, but I, me- I never meant it, for no, sure. No, it was a joke, but yeah, these yeah. guys mean it. They're like angry. Yeah. They're like, She's she, you know, blah, blah, <laughs> like have fun in Hollywood. We'll never see you again. And I'm like, Loki, like, okay, she might not see you again. And it's chill because you should be happy for her that she's moved on to bigger and better things. And I understand not like leaving your roots behind, but it doesn't seem like she is. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of hate. On there's this. just too and much hate. Of, and I also get annoyed on the, the white side of things where they are like – Oh, a lot of like dance performances and like that's interesting and this shit and that shit. And I'm like, you know, this this is, you know, a Daisy wedding and we aren't like we do go hard and it is a huge spectacle and celebration, you know, that. And so I, I don't know the reaction. That's weird that that's weird that people are saying that it's go, they're going too hard in the Daisy side. Really? Not the Daisy, the white people. Yeah, you know, there's something like white people were saying that, oh, there's too much dancing. I just think they were so, – this is our <laughs> – I do believe this. This is actually truly the first representation in mainstream American media of an Indian wedding. Yeah. Everything sure. else we've seen has been lame interpretations. This is like a real one that's like in the public eye. And so people are like – and look, is this real? Like is this applicable to normal people? No. OK, no one's have no one's, you know, in a Rajasthani palace, you know, having a stage set up where people have performed backup dancers doing all this shit. It's not how it looks. However, the festivities, the sense that it's such a huge occasion, that is like we, we are over the top, this weddings. And so like I, the the pe- like, I, I don't know, I saw one post on Facebook of this girl who's like, posted they got married that article and she's like well he still has a huge part of my heart and this dude or this girl underneath commented like she's like i just don't get it like i don't get this I'm like what's there not to get people he got married just just you know that's it that's all you gotta know and he married, married a brown girl okay so, and so it's not what you're <laughs> used to get over it yeah so what you know it pisses me off the, the, <laughs> these the, the white girl perspective that like everything has to end with you guys, you know. Like, it, it, there are a lot of gorgeous women that aren't white that are yeah. attractive. Yeah. And you know, like I don't know, I got a little annoyed because I saw it, and they were like, "I just don't get it." I'm like, "What's there not to get? Look at your ugly face, and look at her beautiful face, and that's yeah. what to get." Yet, yet it's like they they care not about. Not that she's ugly, but I was just mad. She's she's oh, fine. She's well, a normal I'm... girl. Now I don't know if I know this for sure. Is Meghan Markle? Isn't she like a, from a this? Like she's not white either. No, no, she's no. Just, she's half black. She's half black. Right. So like they're okay with that, right? They're okay with Meghan Markle and like, and it, it's like that's not even in America. That's in a completely different country, and they're okay with them getting married. But what? God forbid. Well, you I see Joe Jonas. Like, or Nick know, Jonas. Nick, Nick Jonas. Jonas. Whatever. <laughs> Joe Jonas is with Joe Jonas is with Sansa Stark. Okay, but oh, damn. Um, no, no. Um, no, well, Meghan Markle, even that was a huge thing. But the difference is that the culture is not as not as starkly different 
than Indian culture and Pakistani culture. Pakistani culture is very different. I mean, I, I mean, there are huge differences in African American culture, but she also is half black. She do, she was raised with her mother, Meghan Markle, who is black, but. I don't know. I feel like when you're marrying into a royal family, you follow their traditions. And so nothing was out of the norm. And in this case, Priyanka Chopra, which I love, was like, I want my wedding to be desi. We can yeah. do a we can do a white ceremony. We can do a, a Christian ceremony. Not that it's white. There are a lot of non-white Christians, but you know what I'm trying to say. We can do a Christian ceremony. But majority of this wedding, one, it has to be in India. And two... <laughs> It has to be this EF. And I, I respected it. Like, she was like, this is my faith. Her faith is just as strong, and she wanted it represented. Yeah, and clearly Nick Jonas loved it. You know, like, he doesn't care. Like, he 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 was happily, you know, down for a wedding like that. You know, so why do you care? Why why is it bothering you as a person that's like, oh, they're good. Like, why, if he's okay with if he's happy, then you should be like, all right, cool. If you're a fan of him, you should be like, all right, cool. Also, I think it's, like, lovely. Maybe it's just me being like, you know, this is the romantic side of me. But it is lovely to see, like, cultures merging and, like, you know, people exposing themselves to new things. And I think it is like, it's nice. It's, it's, it's nice. And it's to only going to, it's, it's, it's only going to be more as we get older. Well, it's just as I, I mean, more. as I've gotten older, like when we were younger, like this was not a thing. Like we oh, never, no. and then all. now it seems like more accepted as, you know, people of this, um, background marrying white people or you know other races you know like you just see it more because boundaries and things are you know falling and i mean i honestly in in the end of the day if you're both good people and you both have an understanding on how you want your life to be and how you want your kids to be raised if that's already predetermined preset you know then then what's the problem yeah the biggest thing is why people want to marry, you know, within their culture is because you want your kids to be raised with those values. Yeah. But if you already predetermine, like, look, these are things that we want to raise. Like, if you're like, hey, like, I'm Muslim and I want my kids to be Muslim. And the other person's like, okay. What's the problem? Yeah. It's a my- mutual, like, they no, it's like, if they, if they want to do it then you know you should not it's it doesn't affect you why does it affect you you know well i just think that like you know in the end of the day like this life i'm getting a little philosophical here we only have so much time in this life and if you live it for other people you know you got issues it's just not worth it you're just gonna (laughs) die living in other people's like wishes that's not a life well lived or well loved yeah you know? Like, and lo- something that's like a little off of this topic, but like, you know, it's kind of related in a sense. Um, there's a new video game that came out a couple weeks ago, right? Called Fallout 76. I didn't play this, but this is, it's a part of the Fallout series. Everyone loves the series. Everyone praises the, the developers of the game, right? But this is the first mm-hmm. game that they released after years and years of having a track record of having great games. That this is the first game that they actually kind of sucks, right? Oh, that um, sucks. It sucks, right? But then people are going absolutely crazy online, being like, oh, like they, these same people who are just praising this company for years, being like, this company is the best, one of the best developers out there, blah, blah, blah. And to be now like, oh, well, their old games had, you know, their old games had bugs in it. So, no, you know, they were always crap to begin with. It's like, no, you, you're, you're like, stop, folk, like, you're just focusing so much on this one little game. You're, and it's so much energy is being put into this one game when if you just give it a couple of minutes it could be a good game like, and they can update it it'll be better and within a couple of months but they're just focused so much that oh it's crap so now the company's crap you're like no you know if you if this is how you live your life where the littlest things you know there's there, flint flint michigan still doesn't have you know clean water and well, all you all you care about is how your precious developer didn't make a good game like come on I feel like if people, I think what, like, and I I see what you're saying, the connection you're making is that, like, people focus so much on these negatives, on the what they don't understand, what they don't like, you know, and if you live your life focusing on that and, like, you know, judging other people for their customs or, you know, living your life scared of what people are going to say, you know, if you live your life in the negatives, basically. Yeah. Then, you you know... it's not – no one around you is going to, you know, 
you know, people are going to live their life happy despite you. So why are you going to, tr- why are you trying to like, why are you unhappy? You're just letting yourself be unhappy at that You're point. just being the Grinch. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. just being a Grinch. <laughs> the holiday season. Yeah. 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 Um, but that's cool. Though. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's cool. Congrats Prog- to the happy wedded couple. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, and oh no do you have something sorry well uh speaking of like people being angry <laughs> mm. i've been the, the top news today was tumblr yeah that's a it's an interesting thing yeah which i mean it's like i'm surprised they didn't do it earlier i'm surprised that they allowed i'm surprised that they're doing it are you so you're surprised that they are doing it uh, I'm kind of against it. Like, I'm not saying I'm going on Tumblr and looking for this stuff. I actually don't have a Tumblr, people. But I'm curious. Yeah, like why? I think it's I think it's dumb on their part. Like, I think it's so it's so like people are moving towards more of a free and open like content environment, and to then make like such a retroactive or you know retro kind of decision like that, I don't think makes sense. Especially Especially because Tumblr is known for its uninhibited adult content. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. you either go on Tumblr for, like, Tumblr memes or the blogs that are all, like, adult content. So I just don't. Yeah, that's that's the only two reasons why someone would go on Tumblr. <laughs> you know <laughs> to that. To find I'm right. memes and adult content. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one's, all, you know, like. No one's going on. If you want like photography, makeup, all that shit, you go on Pinterest. You only go on Tumblr for two things. Okay, those are it. So I, 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 I can, understand. I can see that where they're coming from because you know if you think about it, Tumblr's. I and I don't know the numbers, and I don't even know if this is true, right? But I'm just saying, I'm assuming that the the demographics of Tumblr are a lot of just like young teenagers, you know. People who are just young, they're just really just like maybe l- less than 18 years old. Rough, I think that's where a lot of the main core of fans of Tumblr are. So you can kind of see why they're kind of being like, all right, I should probably we should probably take out the the adult content because we're just focusing on, you know, the sense. And like, I know in the article that I was reading, they were saying that it got to the point where there were bots being created that just uploaded nothing but adult content but over they, and over again you know what i saw which i thought was the perfect analogy is that instead of fixing the problem they just wiped away half the content you know what i'm trying to say and they were like it's like thanos and yeah. avengers instead of actually fixing the problems that this is like making sure that they remove the bots or you know screening the content so you know like things that are you know actually inappropriate or things that are hate language or things that are you know or viruses are wiped out they're like no we're just gonna get rid of half of everything on this website and uh, that should fix it and that doesn't do shit you're just like limiting the the no one's gonna use tumblr <laughs> half oh, the people who are on tumblr are gonna leave <laughs> all because they can't see their adult content <laughs> Well, also the people who love like Tumblr people, we all know who the Tumblr people are, okay? Yeah. They're very pro, you know, the freedom of expression, okay? Yeah. Even the meme Tumblr people are going to be pissed about this. Yeah. Okay? The people publishing their fan fictions on Tumblr are not happy. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I'm not a fan. I mean, I don't use Tumblr, so I this doesn't. I mean, for both of us, it doesn't affect us at all. But like, yeah, I mean, I tried Tumblr for like a week. I uh, tried someone, it for a week. <laughs> someone actually signed me up. Someone that I used to be friends with, not because they gave me a Tumblr. I didn't like end the friendship because of that. But they uh, they signed me up for Tumblr, and they were like, "Here." I'm like, they like, they're like, what, what pages would you like to follow? I'm like, I don't know. I don't use Tumblr. So they like did everything. And I was like, tried it for a week. And I, I did not. I, I it's, not. it's not, it's not for me. Yeah. I just feel like the Tumblr humor is like, it's funny. Like the first time, the second time, it's just the same thing. It's always like, OMG, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty accurate actually. <laughs> That's very like, accurate. Uh, like dead. <laughs> dead. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's my that's my my sound effect for when people, 
you know, splurge on the keyboard. And they're like, ah, shah, flah, 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 flah. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, I didn't like Tumblr too much. I, I mean, I'm not very, I don't even like Reddit. I'm going to put that out there. I know you like Reddit. That Reddit is the only site that I check. I don't like Reddit. You want to know why? Why? I don't like the format. You don't like the way it is. No, I think it's so freaking old school looking. And like I don't like I have to click in and then click out. Well, and... I mean, have you tried the new redesign? Because I know they redesigned the website. I still love the old school because I was, you know, I, I've been a Redditor for a while now. So for oh, me, no. I love the old school look of it. But I know they redesigned it. I know that people love that too or hate it in the same time. But uh, no, the thing is, is like I also I do only follow one page on, on Reddit, which is whole, wholesome memes. <laughs> nice. Um, but I can you imagine though? Can you imagine though if they did this to Reddit? They wiped up that. They wiped yes, out that. You know that. So then you couldn't be. You so know that would be an outrage for people on Reddit. Not not for me. I wouldn't care either way. Oh no! Uh, no, I don't want to come <laughs> It's an uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> we know this. You know we're trying to. No, be but that, we're but that, to be spicy, but not that spicy. <laughs> but that no, but if you put it in that way, in that sense, then yeah, I can see why people are getting really angry about it. Because like also- Reddit, Reddit is also you have a lot of you have a lot of not safe for work um, subreddits that not necessarily are for like you know porn and sex. It's there's also a lot of not safe for work that's related to like you know morbid reality. There's there's that one morbid reality, which is like it shows you the the. Uh, I guess their 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 message for that subreddit is to show the real stories and how sometimes the reality is p- quite morbid. You know. Yeah. Um, there's also another one that I follow, and I I don't 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 judge me why I follow it, but is I use it as like a way for me to be even more careful with my life. Um, there's a one called Watch People Die, which is really really bad. I and I don't like watching it because I get into that rabbit hole, and then I I feel like I'm going like I feel like I'm going crazy by the end of it. You know, you should you shouldn't do that. To no, me. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But but it's it's one of those, and because but I'm not gonna lie, because of that subreddit, I actually learned to be more careful being in the city you know just because well, anything can happen like, you know no so. no but you know i see what you're i mean like it's kind of the you same for line educationals of, yeah well it's kind of in the same line of like that that show that was like uh, weird ways that people died you know that show i don't know what it's called like well, thousand and one ways yeah thousand and ones yeah whatever ways like i didn't like watching that show i remember watching it, i think with you and i was like i don't like this because it's like this someone actually died like this but it also is like kind of educational in the sense like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that, you know? Yeah. So um, I get that. But no, Reddit would be – Reddit would be wiped. And I think what people are really pissed about is that the what they said they would be targeting female-looking genitalia. And like that's what they're like – that was like their main thing and like, you know. Wasn't it – Was no, it was everything. It was male and female genitalia. It was anything. But female-looking nipples. But but I think they also said as a caveat they're like well breastfeeding is fine if you're using it in oh, an thank art God. and they're like if you're using if you're showing your breasts in a artful way then that's also fine no but they've been ta- they've been um that's the whole thing if, as they've been marking content as you know inappropriate that are like that literally aren't showing anything. Yeah. That are like, you know, like, you know, anime, sometimes anime girls are, you know, ridiculous looking. <laughs> but <they're>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that, that weirded me out. But <laughs> that's that's that, that's that's how I, I like that. that's how I boil it down. He he he. I don't I didn't want to hear that again. <laughs> but I heard it again. Yeah. Um, But they, they're they like they're, you know, they're they're locking down on that, too. And so it's like it's sweeping and it's uh, it's really, I think, kind of like harmful because when you – that's a rabbit hole. Here, when you start uh, banning certain things, then, you know, what? when does it end? What is – what if someone finds something inappropriate and then it's – you know, I, I get what they're going, like adult content. I guess you can tell what adult content is. But if there's a comic that's slightly more promiscuous looking in its nature, you can't ban it if it's art. Yeah. But they might. You know what I'm trying to say? This is when, when it gets slippery. I wonder how they're going to do it. Because here, it's, I'm reading it now. It says here, banned content includes photo, videos, and GIFs of human genitalia, fe- female presenting nipples. 
That's what you were talking you see, about. See that that's the thing. What? Female presenting nipples in any media and involving sex acts, including illustrations. The exceptions include nude nude uh, the exceptions include nude classical statues and political protests that feature nudity whatever that means whatever that means so like a comic (laughs) that might have someone who has you know a more risque look and look for people there are a lot of desis that are probably listening to this that are like good ban it here's my thing we live in this country for a reason okay because we have freedom of expression that allows us allows us to say what we what we feel and to you know wear what we want to wear or you know not wear what we want to wear to an extent obviously depending on you know this the place because um, establishments have their own set of rules but you when you start censoring people it gives them more of a reason yeah. you start infringing because. It opens the door for, like, you know, all the. And look, this isn't like hate speech. This is adult content. But, you know, you start censoring art. And if you start censoring art, you start censoring books that have, like, more sexual tones. And then you start censoring swears and this and that. And it becomes a slope, a slippery slope. And I, I really believe that. And I'm, I'm also, like, abhorred. Like, that is, that's being banned. But, like, you know, Nazi speech isn't being banned. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of like, where, where, what, what, who's, who's deciding these things? Who is making these arbitrary decisions here? The, the new policy says here, the new policies announcement comes just days after Tumblr was removed from the Apple app store over a child pornography incident, oh. but it extends far beyond that matter alone. That's what they say. Oh, yeah. See, that but, 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 makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that kind of makes sense because, that, and that's what I was trying to say. It's like I, I feel like there's a like the way the the demographic skews in de- Tumblr. I can see someone taking advantage of that and just being like, "Oh, I'm gonna prey on that." You know, that's why I never like Tumblr because I feel like you feel I feel dirty whenever I go on that website. Ooh, Reddit, I feel like dirty too. Really? <laughs> yeah, Reddit's just as gross in some ways. Maybe, like, yeah, maybe I'm just. I guess Reddit has a lot of those incel dudes who are like hate women and want to murder them. That's true. But it and also depends Reddit's- on the, it also depends on the pl- on the community that you're looking in. I yeah, know. but that's exactly Tumblr. Yeah, that is true. That is true. You know, what I'm trying to say like there's the uh, the Taylor Swift fan Tumblr, and then there's this child pornography Tumblr, which I definitely think that should be banned. But that's illegal, and that's illegal because you know that's hurting a, a, a being. Whereas a picture of an anime girl in a short skirt and a top is not hurting anyone. Yeah. Who's fully clothed. Just He's, just just a little sexually suggestive. <laughs> right. This is a high difference. Okay. So I, I don't know. I guess you're right. I, I think Tom it's lazy on Tumblr's part. Yeah. They can't manage their own site and, and start sweeping through these things, then there's gonna be a problem, you know? It, it's one of those things where it's like, isn't there like is doesn't Twitter also allow adult content but you never see it? Like I think they should have implemented something. Twitter somewhere. does. Twitter does allow some adult content. No, it does allow adult content. But I feel like the Twitter's way Twitter's also I, notoriously bad at like you know like it, it has its own issues. Yeah, I just feel like it, the way Twitter did it, like you never even see it if you even if you try. Like you just have to kind of g- know how to get. You have to go to like the those pages, yeah. like those like those people. And uh, I'm not doing that, you yeah, know. So that's weird. Exactly. Um, cause that's a little much. <laughs> that's a little too much. <laughs> like at that point, just go on your sites. Yeah. You, you know? It's the internet. You have, a- why are you looking why are you looking on Twitter for that? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? When, when, like- you, when you got the plethora of websites on the internet, you know, you know, it's all free. It's all free. Don't go on Twitter. Let people tweet. Let me see, you know, cute old celebrities tweet. And that's exactly. it. Exactly. So that is my opinion on the whole Tumblr debacle. Um, I was going to bring up one thing, I guess, to kind of get off and have a nice little, like, funny little topic to talk about. I, yeah, my next topic would have been really dark. So let's let's be yeah, well, let's let's, let's, break, yeah, let's break it up a bit. <laughs> Do, have you heard of Payless and their the new extinct Palessi? The Palessi? 
holy crap, it was genius. How funny. So people are outraged by this because No, I thought people were thought it was funny. Well, well, I guess this is just one article then because it's a Vox, it's a Vox article and then this person is going hard being like, "Oh no, it's a, you know, um well, the, the headline goes, Payless doesn't need to trick bargain hunting young people with full luxury ho- ho- hoaxes. No! And it's like, Ugh. and rude marketing stunts like Palesi are totally missing the point. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. No, they, to- they <laughs> totally missed the point of Palesi. They were showing how people are, you know, they think that you should pay crap tons of money. Like, no one truly knows fashion is the point. Yeah. You know, if you... If you label something $500 and say it's high quality, you know, people will pay for it, okay? And these weren't these weren't bargain hunting shoppers. These were elitist snobby people who paid that money, okay? <sighs> That was the point. Yeah, and you had these people who were in- being interviewed and be like, oh, yeah, so this is this is a $500 shoe, and they're like, would you buy this? And they're like, yeah, of course. This is amazing. I love this shoe. And they, they you know, they showed five or six other people being saying the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. This is so, I love the way it looks, and I, lo- I love this, and I love the quality, and this is a really nice quality. I can see myself buying this for 500 bucks, blah, 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 you know? And then they kind of, they dropped the bombshell in the very end, being like, you know, that's pay less. And they're like, oh, what? I can't believe it. You know, like they're just like well, people actually bought it. And they, yeah, and they actually bought it, but then they got refunded. But still, like they, the, the the fact that they were even being like, yeah, I'm gonna go buy it anyway, not knowing. Oh, oh, Palessi. I never heard of the company, but I hear it's fancy. There's this one photo on you know the Palessi Instagram, the fake Instagram that they made, being like, oh, this model's wearing it, so it must be it must be great. <laughs> and it's like not. Well, it just it's it. it <laughs> The people who are against, I think it was, look, I think it was really smart on Pinterest. I agree. Part. It's very company smart. filed for bankruptcy. You know, they're they're struggling. I love Payless. I'm a big Payless fan. Sponsor us, Payless. <laughs> but um, I wear Payless constantly. I'm not, like, going out shopping at these high-end stores. Yeah. And the thing is, is, like, I, I, you know, I just feel like the point was is that anything can be nice looking if you, you know, it. it they were like, I'm trying to word it correctly. What I'm trying it, to say. It's that culture. Though. It is that culture, though. It's that culture that, like, oh, we need to, like, you know, what's, I, I don't even know what the word. You I don't know even know what I'm trying, trying to... to say, though, is, like, is like they were like, oh, like, you know, oh, this looks fancy. The quality looks good. This is that. These people don't know freaking fashion then, obviously. Yeah. You know, if they knew fashion, they wouldn't, they would know that it wasn't that quality. I and so they, they, you know, most people are paying money for something they don't even appreciate. So when you judge people who are shopping from Payless going, those are cheap shoes, you, honey, wouldn't even know the difference between cheap and not cheap shoes, is my point. Yeah. And not even just with, like, fashion. It goes with a lot of things. You can you can put a plate of spaghetti from a fancy restaurant and a plate of spaghetti that you bought from Stop and Shop. And, I don't believe that. Actually, I think that's well. Uh, well, ingredients alone. I mean, taking away the ingredients, right? If you put, obviously the way you create the food is different, right? But you've had these tests. You've had these blind taste tests, being like, oh well, I only like I only like Oreos, right? Or I only like this type of cookie. But then when they're given another cookie that's just as good at it, and they're like, oh well, oh I think this is the Oreo one, and it turns out that it's not the Oreo one, and you're like, okay, there you go. It's just perspective. It's just a way I, you. I see what you. I do. I do see what you mean. Like if you go to a fancy restaurant and you're buying steak, and it's like you know seventy dollars, and it's like a bite, and I know you're paying for like excellent quality and this is that, but like you could go to, you you could make your own steak at home for twenty bucks and make it beautifully and you yummy it just and good. more food yeah. for 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 less money and you know. I do think sometimes, and I do agree with fashion, some things are exquisitely made and they are worth the money that you're paying yeah, for. Totally, it. You know what I'm totally. trying to say? And that like, same with food. But I also think a lot of things, and no one wants to call it out, a lot of these big fashion places too, they are paying a lot of people not so much money to make their their clothes. Yeah. And you I, I, know, your clothes are, that's the truth. I mean- some things aren't like I do believe like a Chanel bag is made in France and it has, you know, that's why they you spend two thousand dollars on it is because it is actually made where it is made. Yeah. 
but like certain middle brands. You know what I'm trying to say? That try and pass and you pay 200 bucks for a jacket. Like, like Nike or like something Zara. or shit. Yeah. When you have, you know, they are all in sweatshops. Why are you paying this exuberant price? It's all go, you know, I, I could go on. And I, on it's just what it's what this is the a thing that I've been battling just because it's I've never been a you know, you know me. I'm not I've, I've <laughs> never been a brand guy. I don't care. I could care no. less about brands. And I've been bagged on it. I've been been I've been told that oh you look like a bum with your with your some of your shirts and i'm like i don't care if i like the shirt i could care less where i buy the shirt from as long as it's cheap that's all i care i want it to be just i just want if 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 i had it my way i would want a shirt to be as much as just 20 bucks and that's it that's all i don't want to pay any more than 20 bucks for a shirt i don't like the shaming that some people get some people can't afford it yeah the shaming Some people can't can't afford certain stuff i'm like Though I do say, like, fashion is is fashion, and do I think you're the most fashionable person? No. However, I wouldn't ever say anything that why is your shirt only five bucks? If that's what you can afford, then you, that's what you can afford, and that's not to be shamed. However, people, you can make something that is cheap still look good, and that's what Payless was trying to say. Is like these maybe aren't you know Chanel shoes or Louis, Louis Vuittons, but they're nice, and you can dress them up, and you can make them look nice, and you don't have to spend exorbitant exorbitant amount of money on them. And you know, it it doesn't like these things don't have to be inaccessible. Is my point? Looking good or feeling good about yourself doesn't need to be inaccessible. It's not. It's not how much money you spend on a wardrobe. It's how you work the war, war, wardrobe. Exactly. That makes it exactly, you know? and. Some people aren't about fashion, and that's fine too. That's my point. Is that like though? But the people who are shouldn't be shamed because they're not buying these expensive brands. However, I do have an appreciation for the art that goes into some of these, these. these oh yeah, for sure. Because for sure, there is an art to it. There is a quality. If you're buying like a a hand stitched leather bag from this tiny you know shop in Italy, and it's five hundred dollars. You 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 would pay that, yeah, because it, you're paying for that quality. You're paying you for know? yeah, the hard work and quality that went into it. You're not paying for the looks of it, I guess. You know, at that point, I, at that point, so? you're not looking at it for the looks, right? I guess maybe. No, I mean some of these bags are still beautiful. Like you're pay, you're paying for all of it. You're paying for yeah. the whole thing, the whole the, the whole, whole shebang. package. I think as this is though, I and I will say this: we're so used to people putting all this manpower into hand making suits and they still be cheap. Yeah, that is true. We are spoiled in that sense. Desi clothes are so beautifully made um uh, and they're not that expensive. Like it's designer ones, I'm not I'm not going to comment cuz those are expensive, but they're still made the same way as any Tharic Road shop. You have people in the back working with their. You that, know. That's what I love about Pakistan is that you can see, like you can look, you can show a picture of being like, yo, I want this type of Sherlock Holmes, you know, I want this, and it's like must be, it could be like some fancy smanshy type, you know, brand name thing, and some guy from Thotic Road can make it for mad cheap, <laughs> you know. Which is, you know, it's messed up in some ways. But it's just like good then, you know? But you also know, you we also know that those high designers in Pakistan. Are using the same people, same people in the back, Darzis, you know, using them because they're talented, and, uh, and you know they're taking advantage of their cheap yeah. labor. So why not I skip you, corporation, big bit company, or whatever, and just go straight to the, you know, person themselves and just get it how exactly. I want it. exactly exactly. And pay them maybe even more than you pay them. Let's be honest. Yeah, we. Have, I mean, I don't know if. I mean, we can cut this out if this is too much. But I mean, we even have family members, a family member that is in the clothing industry, and like you can go see their place. You can see. You can go in there. You can be like, all right. You can see the guys working in there, and then you know you you're like, okay, you appreciate the work that's going into it. And you're like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, like that's awesome. That you know, at least we're getting. Uh, you know, at least they're getting paid yeah. for the work that they're doing. They're not getting paid scraps for making 500 no. shirts in in a minute, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But I think with basic clothes, it's so like the it's inherent, it's inherently cheap. Yeah. 
No, no, no. I'm saying it's well oh, done. Okay. The yeah, stitching. Yeah. Obviously, you can have it bad, badly done. But, like, a lot of times you see this intricate work that they do, the stitching and the beading and all mm-hmm. of the stuff. And it's – it's you've seen those clothes, people. They're not not intricate. Yeah. And you can – if some – also, like, when we say cheap, we're just saying they're not $5,000. Yeah. We're just we're saying, saying the price you can get something the gorgeous price for 300 yeah. 400 bucks. that's, like – beautiful that is high quality in the sense that it was made beautifully um and the hours went in but you could buy something for 10 bucks and it's like ugly and terribly done i'm not saying that it's just yeah you know it's not like you could pay for that same shirt and pay uh, like two thousand dollars or you could pay like 500 bucks yeah exactly that's my point so yeah um yeah i guess we we can end it on your thing i'm not always what you're gonna bring up Oh, mine's such a sad Do you, you want to end on a topic. sad note? <laughs> okay, well, I have two topics. We could talk about baby, it's cold outside. Or we could talk about the allegation against Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, man. That's a hot topic, though. Man, oh, man. Um, we, we, well, we can touch up on Neil, and then we can end it on the baby. Baby. I feel like that okay, would be well, a nice, Neil DeGrasse... nice order. Yeah. End. <laughs> yeah. Nicer. <laughs> well, Neil deGrasse... <laughs> I know it's a, such a heavy topic, but Neil deGrasse Tyson was accused um, by two women of inappropriate sexual misconduct and one woman of rape in the eighties and their graduate program. So um, he denies that. Well, he doesn't deny the first two allegations. He says he did not intend for them to come off in that sub way. And that wasn't, you know, that wasn't his intention and that, you know, he, he feel, he apologizes. And then he denies the rape. Okay. And so um, when he posted that thing, when I saw it posted, it was posted on Twitter. It was like my response. It had 45,000 likes. So it was very popular. You know, people liked it. And it, it, it comes to this whole thing, and we've talked about this on the show before, but when it's your hero – you want you don't want to believe it, you know. And uh, sometimes your heroes are the people that let you down the most because you put them on this pedestal. And I think, like honestly, I'm going to be honest with myself here. Before this job I started, which I work at an eating disorder facility, and I work with a lot of people who have trauma, um, are trauma survivors. Um, before this job, I honestly would have been one of those people who are like, well, who knows? We'll see. It doesn't seem that credible or this, this, that, you know? But now working there, it feels wrong to discredit someone saying they were raped. I just feel like a lot of people who are trauma survivors, trauma doesn't work in ways that we understand. It like it scars your it scars you mentally and you know, your body reacts and your brain reacts in ways that we don't even understand so uh, i i don't know i just think that i want to i think like my heart wants to believe because i I love neil degrasse tyson because i love physics in the sense that like my dad was a phys you know physicist and i love cosmos and i love that whole thing and i thought he was super smart but um i also can't like in good sense, say I don't believe the allegations because I just feel like it's 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 effed up to not to not believe it just because you like. Someone. Do do you think? Did you read his like? I shouldn't say his apology, but did you read his statement? Yes. So I do have to say, like, did you do you respect? For the do rape, you respect his his like the way he kind of presented it? Or so for the first two for the misconduct. I, I see the inappropriateness, but I also see where he could have been coming from. Because he's kind of an awkward yeah. dude. He's a socially he's awkward a, he's guy. He's a scientist. And I, <laughs> right. <laughs> a very smart man. And the first one, it was like he kind of like went up her dress to look at her tattoo. But she had this tattoo of the of like some solar system or whatever, the solar system, um, on her shoulder. And it goes up to her collarbone. And he was like looking at it. And maybe he was inappropriate by looking, but I don't think that was his intention honestly um though he should be told that it's inappropriate you know even if it wasn't his intention you still have to learn that you can't do that you can't like look into someone's dress just to see like this interesting tattoo you have to ask consent (laughs) for someone's body and then the second one she said that you know he invited her to his house he was wearing a wife beater 
and you know at one point said that like i would hug you more but he's like oh i'll only hug you once because if not i'd want to hug you more and then like did this weird he said I, i'll let me show you a native american handshake in which like you caress the inner palm i don't even know but it was inappropriate and he did say one thing that i thought was if he said it, it was not actually just bad was that he was like he can't concentrate if this woman's a producer which is 1000 percent inappropriate like she's you know you can't say that but the other stuff i'm like he i just don't know if he's just kind of off though he should know he shouldn't do it i don't think his his intention was to like get with them you know the third the rape his response i and i it is a little fishy because he doesn't ever outright say, I did not rape her. He says, "He what does he say? He says something like the assumption, she doesn't remember the event, so she's assuming. Meanwhile, yeah. according, oh, yeah, I got I it right here. Too here, yeah. He, yeah, he says, the drug and rape allegation comes from an assumption of what happened to her during a night that she cannot remember. It is as though a false memory has been implanted which, because it never actually happened, had to be remembered as an evening she doesn't remember. Nor does she remember waking up the next morning and going to the office. So do you know what I mean? He never did not. He never goes, I have never raped her. But then he also goes on saying that I kept a record of everything she posted in case her stories morphs over time. So this is sad, which for me defies explanation. So, like, he has his bases covered in the sense, too, because he's probably he saw this coming. He probably was like, OK, clearly this is a little weird. He Maybe he realized at that moment, like, OK, like, maybe I went too far. Maybe this is going a little too far. I'm going to make sure. Why would he be following it if he wasn't worried about what it? What do you mean? Why would he be following what she would write and post and stuff if he wasn't worried about be- it? I feel like it's. I don't know, because it's. You see how that's fishy? But see, like, I I can see where he's coming from because I keep records of everything that I talk about, too. Because I know that someone who could say one thing about me, I'll have a record of it somewhere. It's very different keeping record of what you talk about versus keeping record if you've raped someone. But I I don't know. I I, I, I never – I'm I'm always uncomfortable to talk about stuff like this because I don't know what to say. I know. How do you say it? Because it's like – I know. Sure, maybe he did it, but what if he didn't? And then, like, everyone's – well, this is when it gets hard because this is when, this is when you know we there is this is a this is a trial by you know the court of opinion here. This is not a trial in which there is evidence being produced, even though Alec witness testimony is considered, uh, you know, admissible by court. So her testimony is admissible and his testimony is admissible. The thing is, is for me. This is what I meant that after working at this job, I, I can't say anything because, you know, trauma is weird. Sometimes you literally just remember the event and you don't remember anything else because it's such a painful, traumatic thing that happens to you that's physically and mentally painful that in, until you're triggered, first you block the whole thing. And then until you're triggered, you just remember those things vividly and the rest, you just, it was too much sensory input and everything else fades. You know, and so like I can believe that she remember she might not remember the night, but she remembers that she was raped. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And he his answer is so roundabout. And I don't know if that's just a Neil deGrasse Tyson thing because he always talks like that. But it's always like, you know what I'm trying the wording where he's like a false memory had been planted implanted which uh because it never actually happened had to re- be remembered as an event she doesn't remember like it's so roundabout i'm like why are you t- just say i didn't do but it but see but then if but no you can't see but that's that's from what i but, know i did not no, rape but her but see that's that's the issue though cuz if every other case omna has been a person being like i didn't do it and then he still got the and what nothing, has come off nothing, of it? Brett Kavanaugh come of it. literally said, I didn't do it, and he became a Supreme Court justice. So the only backlash is on the woman, from what I've seen, other than Harvey Weinstein, which there's, I mean, Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, there have been men who have been, you know, pushed off. But, like, even Louis C.K. is not performing he again. Is actually. He is coming back. He's coming back into performing. Yeah, Aziz Ansari is coming back, even though I did agree with Aziz Ansari was, like, an odd one. But, you know, my point is, is, like, 
Harvey Weinstein, it was like hundreds of women that he raped. Now, now let me ask you this, Amber. Raped. Just so comparing Aziz Ansari's story to this story, what is I don't you feel like it's kind of a little no. a little similar in the sense that like the first, the first two, two, right? The first two rape is very different. Mm-hmm. Okay. She, you need to be, con- you need to consent. If you are drunk and passed out, you cannot consent to rape. I mean, consent to sex. Okay, so if she cannot remember, and then she wakes up, and then she wakes up, and he like rapes her again, you know, and t- you know, on top of it, like it, it's rape, and that's not like a season. Sorry, because he didn't rape her. She consented to it, and then when she didn't consent. You know, she felt pressured. She said, I feel I felt pressured with Aziz Ansari to continue. But at no point did she verbally say no. And she just went along with it. And then when she did say something, he he was like, oh, and they stopped. And then, you know, she sent that whole thing to him the next day and he apologized profusely and was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't realize. But there was a whole bunch that went into Aziz Ansari that it sounded like it was sad for her because it's a dilemma in which women are – feel pressured to go through things because of, you know, the the expectations, but that also you have a strength and you have a responsibility to yourself to, to be able to say no. If someone doesn't listen, then 1000 percent you are a vic- you are a victim. You know, that's you know, that is rape. But if you say no, then you have to say no unless you're incapacitated, obviously, if you're asleep or passed out or you know not in your right mind you can't say no but if you you have to you have to have some strength on a date with a guy that you go to his his apartment if you don't want to have sex you say no i'm just reading i'm just reading his statement and like Ooh, no and it's gosh. like i don't know like i'm just reading the specifically a third part and i don't know it doesn't it no, seem it doesn't. Off? I feel like it, nothing, nothing happened. That's what it feels like. It feels like nothing happened. Well, if you read her, I, I didn't. I gotta read her. I gotta open up that like. I, hers is like you know. I woke up. You know, I was naked. He comes in. He climbs on top of me again and does it again. And I, I felt trapped and this, this, that, and you know, all this, and you feel bad. And then he goes, well, she didn't remember, I, she doesn't really remember. And, you know, who knows? It's a false memory. And he kind of says it like that. Trauma doesn't work like that. If she's traumatized, it's not a false memory implanted. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a moment that she's remembering. It's PTSD. Okay. It's a flashback to it. So like, that's what's hard is both. I don't think she's not credible. And I don't, not believe her i just don't want to believe her because i i like him it sucks you know like it really does and they're, uh, the the best thing about it is that they're investigating it and i hope hope it's not biased and i hope they give her that respect to actually investigate because if he has nothing to worry about he has nothing to worry about yeah if he didn't do it, you know. But but it, it, it's so easy to say though. He, no one's gonna believe him though. His 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 career from now on has been tainted, and that's the issue. I has been tainted. I, you think that every it, give it give it a couple years and it won't. Yeah, be people. Tainted. No, don't get me wrong. The the new the way the news cycle works, everyone's gonna forget about it by tomorrow. But at the same time, there is always gonna be now from now on. There's gonna be an asterisk in his in his career. That oh wait a second, he did do this though. But if whether whether it's it true, like whether it's report. real or tr- not real, it's going to be an asterisk. And it's but, but no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, if you look at any other person, any one other person that's been accused, like Aziz Ansari, going back to him, every time you're going to bring up Aziz Ansari, it's going to be like, yeah, Aziz Ansari is a great actor. But remember that one time that you got accused that one time? I'm gonna, I'm like, it, it's, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know what to think of it. I know what you're saying, but. The, then the question you have to ask yourself is, okay, what's worse, an asterisk or, you know, having trauma and being a trauma victim or survivor? You know, it, it's it, – I feel bad for their career, but their life wasn't ruined. And if she really was raped, that that is – that is pain that I can't even begin to understand. And I see it in these girls that I work with every day, This, you know, women who've been raped and this, this, that. And it, it, it is – it affects your entire life. And so it's like I'm sorry if it's not true. And yet, But, I mean, 
the truth is they're not going to find anything because it was 30 years ago. They're not going to find any evidence on it. And so he'll have an asterisk by his name. They're going to say, look, we didn't find any evidence and you're innocent until proven guilty. So he's clear and he'll have an asterisk. And in a couple of years, he'll still be working, but he'll have an asterisk. If, but if there really was something and they didn't find it, you know, she's just a woman who, you know, who was raped and, you know, people will hate on her. And that's it. That's like her life. She's a rape victim who who people hate on and it's terrible. So it's it's like look at Louis C.K. has that asterisk, but he's he's living his life. Yeah, that's true. Still performing. Uh, Aziz Ansari is still making bank. You know, the only people you know who have really been affected was what's his name? Matt Lauer was really affected, but he was like it was proven that he did it. Yeah. And Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey and these men that did heinous things. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So, like, the men who've had, like, these little things, which they're not little to the women, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, a lot of men have been able to reemerge. So he'll be able to reemerge. I hope so. I mean, I hope I hope, I hope this all is just nonsense. I hope, you know, like, I hope that she finds peace and I hope she's okay. And I hope that, like, because truthfully they're not going to find anything because it's just too late now. And... Uh, I hope that she's able to like try and find a healthy place inside of her. And, you know, if he didn't do it, I really hope that his career can, you know, bounce back. And I think it will. He's also a scientist, you know, like he can research. Yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't have to be in the public <clears throat> eye to do his job. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just looking at the time. Right. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's cool. 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 Um and what well it's not cool. No, it's, it's cool. Sad, like as in yeah. like yeah, like that's that's we should we should we should that's, that's it. it. We should probably like I don't want to end it. I don't I don't want to end note. it on that note. <laughs> like it's kind of a little down. Um, well, let's quickly bring up the uh, the thing the uh, oh since it's a little more lighthearted. Radio stations in a way. Yeah, radio stations are banning it. Baby, it's cold outside. That song, baby, it's cold outside. Like the every other can't stay. I've never one. heard the song because it's like. I have yes, never you heard the song. Yeah, if you heard it, you would know it. It's like on all the Christmas stations, okay? Except now it's not. But um, because I'm listening just, I'm to listening it? to it right now. Sorry, I was just. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. But it's it's a famous classic, okay? And people are thinking it promotes rape culture. Because she's like, I can't stay. And he's like pressuring her to stay because oh, it's boy. cold. And she's like, is there something in my drink? And he's like, no, no, stay. Oh, boy. You know? And so be like, oh, rape culture. Okay. But if it was made today, I'd be like, yeah, that is a highly inappropriate song and weird. It was made like in very, I don't know, in the 50s. I don't know when it was made. I should probably look that up. But it was made during a time when the culture was very different. And he's not pressuring her. She's there because she wants to be. And she's making an excuse so that she said she could say she made an excuse. That's what people are saying. Like people who understand, like the historians are saying, no, 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 it's not. She wants to be there. She's playing coy. Right? Being like, was oh, there something in my drink? There's probably they were like, no, no, no. The drink the whole thing is that women didn't really drink back in the day. They had like very light weak drinks and so she's trying to blame it on the alcohol that's why she's staying or you know like making all these excuses and she actually wanted to stay and that the actual messed up part is that she couldn't just say yeah i want to stay over she had to make up this whole thing that's what's messed up about it but it was also like the 50s and so people are making a big stink and this is what pisses me off like it's a classic song leave it alone i hate the internet (laughs) <laughs> I'm just gonna say it right now. I hate the internet. This is the reason why I don't ever. That's why I'm like, like we're focusing on this. Like we're focusing. This is on why this right I, I'm off Facebook. I'm off of every social media except for Reddit, and and that's pretty much it. Luckily, everything I've seen has been anti right. that sentiment. They've been like, this is ridiculous. Like people my age are like, this is not. This is bringing it too far. Yeah. It's like leave it alone. I don't know. It's. <sighs> 
<laughs> like, I, like I, yeah, it's it's just a song. God damn it, it's just a fucking song. <laughs> like, who cares? Who cares? If you don't like the song, just don't it's listen to it. Like... That's all you gotta do. Why do you have to complain about it? That's what my thing is. I don't understand. That's my thing. Is that I don't understand why people need to complain about the littlest things, and you're just like, oh, this is this, and this is this. And it's also like, don't complain if you don't have the info. Ugh. Like. You're not like that's not the context of this song, and so you're complaining about something that it, if it was legitimately like I really don't want to stay, I'm really uncomfortable, and I hate this, and they're like, please no, stay, and I want to have sex with you, and I had it like this, then I'd be like, okay, yeah, that's definitely an inappropriate song, uh, should definitely be taken off the radio, but no, yeah. people are complaining about something. It's like the stupid Rudolph thing that I've been seeing. What Rudolph thing? Have you heard? You seen that where like people were like, "Rudolph is a terrible story." Oh yeah, yeah, Santa only yeah, saw yeah, 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 yeah. and all that crap. And you're like, "What?" You're like, come on, relax, people. Just relax. I'm like, can you just find a little relax. joy <laughs> in your life? People are probably gonna think like we're so like not woke, but you know what? Listen, I, 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 I at this, this point, I don't not. even care if I'm woke or not. I'm staying away from all y'all. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. If it comes on the news, I'll read it. If not, if it doesn't affect me, I don't give a shit. <laughs> if you think I'm, you know, terrible for watching Rudolph, the old claymation movie, and like I'm promoting this or this that by watching it and being, you know, whatever, then I don't want you as my friend. There you go. There you I go. don't want you as my friend. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. <laughs> I don't want you as my friend. <laughs> and, and on, on that, that note, note. <gasps> follow us at Father and Friends on Insta and Twitter and on www.facebook.com slash Bob and Friends. Please, 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 please rate and review us four to five stars on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. We're on all them big platforms. Four five stars. Stars only. And uh, apologies to our listeners because of our inconsistent schedules. We are going to try moving forward. We're going to try to be a little bit more consistent. I this is the longest break gonna, we've had. We're, we're, letting you know. This is, and we're gonna we're gonna try and bring it back. And um, we're, I think we're we were testing out some more spicier topics today, yeah. and I liked it. So we're just trying to figure that out. And then, yeah, twenty nineteen is going to be our year. <laughs> It's gonna be our year. All right, I'm gonna. All right, bye.